Hello, Upper Six. Um, we, you should have finished the um, end of topic test on nuclear physics last Monday, um, and I'll be busy marking that in the next few days and hopefully get you back um, some feedback on, on how you did. Um, in the meantime, I need to set you some more work, um, and we do need to start the astrophysics option um, if we're going to complete the course. Um, obviously, I hope to complete the course um, a few weeks after Easter, which is when we would have normally done so. But we have um, spent a bit more time because of, uh, obviously, the disruption caused by coronavirus. So um, let's just, uh, let's just um, start with a sort of introduction to, to how the astrophysics option is, is broken down. Um, there's basically three parts to it. The first part is about instrumentation. So it's about astronomical instruments, mainly telescopes, um, but we're also going to talk about detectors as well um, that are used by um, astronomers and astrophysicists to, to study the universe. Um, the second part of the, of the, uh, the module is stars. Um, stars obviously are a, a hugely important component of the universe, and we look at um, what powers stars, how they're formed, um, how we measure things from stars, so things like their distance, their brightness, and so on, how we compare stars, and we look at how stars evolve. Um, the third part, the final part, is looking at sort of the, the bigger picture, really, of the universe and having a look at galaxies and the expansion of the universe and the Big Bang, so cosmology, basically. So those are the three parts. There's instrumentation, this sort of part one, stars is part two, and then galaxies and cosmology is part three. So um, we're going to start off this week um, with just giving you a bit of a reminder of some work that you should have done at GCSE a few years ago, um, and that is converging lenses. Um, the reason we look at converging lenses to start with is because obviously telescopes, um, refracting telescopes in particular, contain converging lenses. So we need to understand how converging lenses work if we're going to go on and understand how telescopes work which would be the, the next lesson. So the first, the first little lesson we're going to have is just a little bit of a reminder of, of work you did at GCSE on converging lenses. Now a converging lens is a lens which is thicker in the middle and thinner on the outside. So for example, I'm long-sighted in my, my left eye, so the lens in my spectacles that lens there is a converging lens. Um, I have normal vision, or nearly normal vision in that eye, so it's, it's pretty much just a flat piece of glass. But that's a converging lens. So, I mean, as I'm sure you can see in the camera there, it's magnifying me, okay? So, um, that's a lens that's, that's, that's thick in the middle. So, what we need to learn about with converging lenses is how they change the path of a ray of light. And um, by doing that, we can look at how converging lenses produce images. Um, now, there's two types of images that can be produced from a converging lens. The, the first type of image is a real image, which is when light rays are brought together at a point. And if you um, take a screen or a detector and place the screen or detector at a point, it would record um, an image of whatever it is you're looking at. So you'd have the object on one side of the lens, um, the light rays from the object would go into the lens, and then the light rays from any one part of the object would get focused onto a point on the other side. And at that point where the light rays cross, you would have a real image, which you could record on a piece of photographic film or an electronic detector, um, or just a piece of paper or, or, or a screen held up. So that's, that's what we mean by a real image. If you remember all the way back to year eight, the Adams students, you um, probably had a go at making a pinhole camera. Well, that's a very primitive example of, of making a real image. Uh, the, the sort of flipped upside down image at the back of the pinhole camera is a real image. The other type of image that um, a converging lens can produce is a virtual image. And a virtual image is an image that you can see through the lens. Um, so if you look at the object on the other side of the lens, you can see an image of the object. 
Um, but actually, there isn't really an image there at the point where you think there is an image. Um, your eyes are tracing the rays back to the lens and then beyond the lens to a point where they appear to be, the, the, the rays appear to be diverging from. But in fact, at that point, um, there aren't any actual light rays crossing. So it's not a real image, it's a virtual image. It's an image that you perceive because you see light rays which are diverging and you trace them back to a point. But actually at that point, um, there isn't really an image. Um, another good example of a virtual image is the reflection of yourself that you see in the plain mirror every day when you when you look at your face in the bathroom. And uh, if you're standing one meter away from the mirror and you look at the mirror, you will see a image of yourself that's one meter behind the mirror. Now, obviously, one meter behind the mirror is just the wall or beyond the wall. So there isn't actually an image there But you you're perceiving light rays which are spreading out, which are diverging from a point which is, as far as you're concerned, one meter behind the mirror. So that's an example of a virtual image. So two types of images that you can get from a converging lens are a real image and a virtual image. Now there's a couple of features of lenses in terms of uh, nomenclature, if we can pronounce that word right, nomenclature, that you need to learn. Um, and you may have forgotten it from GCSE, so I'm just going to remind you now um, of these little pieces of information that you, you do need to, to get stored into your head. Um, there are some diagrams that you're going to have to learn how to draw um, to show how real images and virtual images are formed and that's going to be part of your, your work that I'm going to give you um, this week. Um, but just to show you that the, the features of um, a converging lens, um, I'm just going to hold up um, my laptop here which has got a, a diagram on of light rays travelling through. Yeah. A converging lens. So I hope you can uh, you can make that out there. So basically what we've got here we've got a converging lens as you see thick in the middle thinner on the outside. We've got light rays that are entering the converging lens from a distant point. So um, this is coming from infinity essentially a distant point that's that's an infinite distance away light rays will be um, coming in parallel to the, the, the lens. Um, the first thing I'm going to point out as, a, as a, um, a definition that you need to know about is this word here, which is the principal axis. Now, the principal axis is basically the line that passes through the middle of the lens and at right angles to the lens. Um, students often by mistake call that the normal OK, um, we've heard the term normal before when we look at um, mirrors and we look at Snell's law. Um, but in this case, we call that the principal axis because not only is it at right angles, it also goes through the centre of the lens. So that's the first thing we need to consider. Um, second point is that we need to learn about is this point here. Now, this is called the focal point and it's where light rays that are coming in parallel on the left hand side would be focused on the far side. So you can see that all these parallel rays, they all refract at the lens and it's refraction that's causing this bending of the light. Okay, we, would, we covered refraction when we did Snell's law back in the lower six. These light rays will all bend and they will all meet at that point there, which is the, the focal point. It's often labeled with a capital F. And depending on the, the thickness of the lens, the focal point will either be very close or very far away from the lens. So the focal length is the distance between the, the lens and the focal point. Um, that would depend on the shape of the, of the lens. Okay, I don't know why, but my, uh, my screen's gone a bit dark there. Okay, anyway, that's, that's basically the, the main features of a converging lens that you need to learn. Now, what we do need to look at um, and I, I can't do this really on video, I'm going to have to give you some diagrams to, to copy as part of your homework, is how we get an image of an object on the far side of the lens if the object is on this side of the lens. And it does depend on where the um, object is, what type of image you get. I'll just put this, put this back down. 
Um, so basically, if, and I'm going to take my glasses off, just to show you, there's the converging lens. Let's just supposing that the focal length of this lens was about 10 centimetres. So um, I'm going to put the pen about 10 centimetres away. So that's, that's the focal length of the lens. If you put an object between the focal point and the lens, you will only see a virtual image of the object. And the virtual image will be on the same side as the object and it will be the right way up. So it'll be an upright image, it'll be magnified and it'll be on the same side as the object. So if I put something between the pen and the, and the lens, well, the pen is a focal point and the lens, then if you're looking from the other side of the lens, you'll see a virtual image of the object on the same side as the object and it'll be upright and it'll be magnified. On the other hand, if I put an object on the far side of the focal point, so an object beyond the um, where the, the, the I put the pen here, which represents the focal point, so my finger there, that could be the object. If you put an object on the far side of the focal point, then you get a real image being formed on the other side of the lens. And the real image is formed when light rays from the object um, converge on the other side and meet at a point. Um, now, depending on where the object is relative to the focal point, will determine whether it's a magnified or a reduced image on the other side. Um, if the um, object is very close to the focal point, then you get a very distant and magnified image on the other side. That's a bit like using a lens like a projector. If, on the other hand, the object is very distant, and we would say more than twice the focal length from the lens, then you get an image that's reduced on the other side of the lens. That's an image which is smaller than the object. So um, there, are, there are three ray diagrams that you need to learn that I will give you as part of your homework, which is how to produce a virtual image, a real image that's magnified, and a real image that's reduced. Um, the other thing to remember is that real images are also inverted, they're upside down and we'll see that when we look at how to, to, how to make a telescope from a converging lens. So that's basically um, all I'm going to talk about for lenses. The rest of the work I'm going to obviously give you on show my homework so you're going to have to read the instructions. Um, so I'm going to give you some notes and some diagrams to do and um, also some, some reading to do and I will give you some homework as well. And I'd like you to have a go at this for Sunday, if possible. Um, I may have to give you some work over the Easter holidays because obviously we are a little bit behind now in trying to get this module done and I do want it out of the way. And as I've said before, it is important that we do all finish the course. It's not gonna be easy for me to assess you um, if it all boils down to the teacher giving you a grade um, if you haven't actually completed the course and this is an integral part of the course. Okay folks, so um, read show my homework, any questions get in touch with me and um, the, the homework I would like in for Sunday um, evening please. Thank you.